Continuing on with Kapitel 10, we have 10.4, 10.5, more with these participles um, that we're doing recently, and then infinitives used as nouns. So let's look at the exercise from the end of the last unit. Die Katze springt auf meinen schlafenden Zimmerkollegen. So the a participle, it's a present participle we're dealing with here. So we have schlafen, which is the infinitive, plus the D, which makes it into a present participle. And then we have this EN ending because it's now an adjective. And we're going to be in the accusative because it's a two-way preposition. That's taking the accusative in this case because the cat is jumping onto my sleeping roommate. So the cat jumps onto my sleeping roommate, or the cat is jumping onto my sleeping roommate, maybe. So the important thing here is, of course, that schlafen plus the D is sleeping. And then um, the adjective ending is, of course, because of the accusative. Der Essende Mann sitzt am Kaffeetisch. So um, the Essend is then our participle here, and it's got that E ending because it's an adjective. It's a nominative masculine singular. Um, the eating man sits at the coffee table. The eating man. The man who is eating. Either way, I think. Yeah. Essen is the infinitive. Essend, then the present participle. Er wohnt in einer wachsenden Stadt. Comes from wachsen, which is to grow. Wachsen, meaning to grow. So you know that that D is there because of the present participle. And then you know that EN is there because it's an adjective ending. So you take those off and you get wachsen which you can look up in the dictionary, meaning um, grow, to grow. So, he lives in a growing city. Er wohnt in einer wachsenden Stadt. That one's not too tricky. Ich spiele mit den besuchenden Kindern. I play with the visiting children. I'm playing with the visiting children. Maybe it sounds a little weird in English, the visiting children. I guess it's all right. But if you feel at all that it seems weird, then, of course, you could say, I'm playing with the children who are visiting. Um, ich sehe den aufgehenden Mond. So, de, now I, I see, the whole thing is a direct object, right? And then aufgehen means to rise, to go up. So then there's the D for the uh, present participle. And then our um, accusative masculine ending there as well. I see the rising moon. Ich sehe den aufgehenden Mond. Okay, now we got some past participles. So, der Dieb fährt den gestohlenen Wagen nach Hamburg. So, gestohlen is, comes from stehlen is to steal with e, e h. Stehlen is to steal, but then gestohlen is the past participle. So, it's, it's, it's very irregular, just like in English. Steal, stolen, stehlen, gestohlen. So, stolen, and um, you can see gestohlen is the irregular past participle. And then the reason this extra e n is on there is because that's the adjective ending. We're now in adjective um, mode, so we've got that. En, um, it's masculine, accusative, that's the ending. So, der Dieb is the thief. The thief drives a stolen car to Hamburg, uh, or maybe even is driving, it was fine as well. The stolen car, that one's pretty straightforward, the stolen car. Sie trägt den um, Samstag gekauften Mantel. So, she's wearing the coat she bought on Saturday. This is one where if you don't switch it over to a relative clause, it sounds pretty weird. She's wearing the on Saturday bought coat, right? Gekauft is bought. So, it's like on Saturday bought. So, you have to really flip it around quite a bit and say she's wearing the coat she bought on Saturday instead of she's wearing the on Saturday bought coat. Okay. Die von den Bäumen gefallenen Blätter liegen auf dem Boden. So this is another one where you've got some uh, quite a few things going on. So the, from the tree's fallen leaves, are lying on the ground. The leaves that fell from the tree lie on the ground, or are lying on the ground. And then, but if you wanted to do it word for word, it would be the, from the tree fallen leaves, lie on the ground, which is, uh, which is confusing English. But it's, it's not confusing in German, but in English, people would be like, what did you just say? So, the leaves that fell from the tree, as in um, a relative clause. Wir schauen die aufgenommene Fernsehsendung später an, which is, we'll watch the recorded TV show later. This one, since it's just the, it's just the adjective by itself, nothing else has been added in between, so we can just add, do it this way, just as an adjective and a noun. The recorded TV show. So, see how this is the past participle, genommen. It comes, and then you see that this is a separable prefix. So um, it comes from auf nehmen. So you have to know that genommen comes from nehmen. 
And then you have to recognize that this is a prefix, so you have to be able to take Alfgenomena back to Alfnehmen in order to look up Alfnehmen in the dictionary. And Alfnehmen means record, to make a recording. So, um, among other things, that's one of... And so with the context, that's why it's so important to read the entire dictionary entry because it could mean something else in a different context. It means, like, to take up, right? Um, but in the, in the context of a TV show, of course, it means recorded. We'll watch the recorded TV show later. Wir verkaufen unser renoviertes Haus für 600,000 Euro. 600, yeah. Um, so we have unser renoviertes Haus. So Haus is neuter. And then we've got an indefinite, it's a, it's a possessive, which works like an indefinite article, like an ein word. So um, it would be like ein renoviertes Haus, unser renoviertes Haus. So that's our... Um, it's our adjective meaning we need for the neuter and the accusative uh, with an ein word. Yeah. Um, and then renoviert comes from renovieren, to renovate. And then this is the past participle. Um, you may remember that uh, verbs that end in ihren um, don't take the ge to make the past participle. So you just leave that off. But then you do the t and the t signals. Okay, now we're in a past participle. And then the adjective ending. We're selling, we're selling our renovated house for 600,000 euros. So, um, uh, yeah, renovated, renoviert, and then also adjective ending. Okay, so now we have Kapitel 10.4, 10.5, um, participles, and infinitives used as nouns. So we have uh, participles used as nouns. We were just doing a bunch of participles, right? Um, and we were using them as adjectives, but you can also use them as nouns. Das Berichtete hat alles bestätigt. Um, what was reported confirmed everything. So it's like saying the reported. Berichten means to report, a verb. To report, berichten. And so you take that, um, that past participle, which is berichtet. Um, it's an in inseparable prefix, so there's no GE. But it's got the it's got the et ending. Berichtet is the it, like ich habe berichtet. I reported. I have reported. Berichtet. And then what you do is now that it's a noun, it's going to be capitalized, and then it's going to take um, the ending das berichtete. And then das folgende is the same um, because it comes from basically you know participles. They are. Uh, they're in a sense adjectives as well, so they also take these noun end or these adjective endings like we were doing before. So das folgende bestätigt das schon gesagte. The following um, state so folgen means to follow. Now we're in a present participle. That see the present participle there with a D. And then um, adjective ending, that would normally go with that. And then gesagt, gesagt is then the past participle, and then ending, and of course capitalized. So the following you can actually do that. It's a parallel form in English, the following, right? Um, and But then, then you, if you try to do it over here, you would say, the already said, the following confirms the already said. It doesn't quite work over here with gesagte. So you change it into a an entire relative clause, um, like we were doing before, what has already been said. Yeah. Der verwundete, the injured, wounded man, so verwunden to to wound, and then der Verwunderte is sort of implies the man after, even though you don't say it, um, because this is masculine, der. Die Schlafende, the sleeping woman, so we don't say the word woman, but it's still, it's a noun, and it's feminine, and it's, you know, talking about doing something that people do, so it's sort of implied, the sleeping woman. Die Schlafende, der Sterbende, the, the dying man, so these are, see, these two are in the present, with the D there, present participle, this one's a past participle. And this one's also a past participle. Der Gestorbene. So it comes from sterben, to die. And then the um, it's irregular in the past participle, gestorben. So we take gestorben, died, the died, right? And then um, we we capitalize this because it's a noun now. <clears throat> and then um, it's going to have that, that corresponding ending as well. Yeah, so... It would just be the died, which is which would be totally confusing in English. So this one has to turn into a whole relative clause, the man who has died. Yeah. Okay, so one example of this is Franz Kafka's Der Verschollene, 
which is a um, which is a work by Franz Kafka. Maybe you know him. And um, this the English "verschwunden" means disappeared. So it's really just the disappeared uh, implied man. The disappeared man is really uh, how you might translate it, but that doesn't sound great. So um, in some translations, you can uh, they they call it the man who disappeared. Der Feschwolner, the disappeared man, the man who disappeared. Translated by Richie Robertson, a colleague of mine. He is great. Okay, so we have, for example, Harry Potter und der Gefangene von Azkaban. So um, we have uh, the prisoner. So in German, a prisoner is actually der Gefangene. So it means the caught. Fangen means to catch. And so gefangen is the past participle. So um, it's like the person who has been caught, the, uh, the arrested person, I guess. So der gefangene is the prisoner, but it really means the caught person. Der gefangene von Azkaban, which is the translation of prisoner. Yeah. So, of course, you have to be 12 years old to watch this movie in Germany. Um, and then uh, we have another example um, of it being used slightly differently. So, im Text besprechen wir eine arbeitende Frau und dann eine nicht arbeitende. Um, arbeitende. Yeah, it's like a, this is a pretty um, rare situation, but it can happen. So, what's happening is that um, it's used elliptically, meaning something's been omitted uh, because it's already implied. So in the text, we discuss a woman who is working, a woman who is working, a working woman. Eine arbeitende Frau. Um, so that's fine. That's like what we've been doing. Dann eine nicht arbeitende. So then, and then one who isn't working. And so a Frau would be implied again, but it's not repeated. So it just looks like it sort of ends with that adjective and it can be kind of confusing. Um, but uh, it's just because you already said Frau, you don't have to repeat it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can do this with any um, with any participle. It's there are infinitely many of these. So um, you're not going to find these all separate separately um, in the dictionary. That's why it's important to recognize what's happening with this ending because then you can take it back to the infinitive and look up that infinitive so you know what it means. And then also you can know you can recognize that ending enough to. Uh, be able to put it into the English ing or past participle form. Yeah. So then we have infinitives used as nouns. These are very versatile and good to know. So in English we say verb plus ing to make a gerund, which just means a noun made out of a verb. So um, we have the infinitive das denken. Denken means to think. And all you have to do to make the the word thinking as a noun as it is to take denken, just the regular infinitive, capitalize it, and then make it neuter. So you could use a definite article, indefinite article, possessive, whatever it is. And um, it's usually with a definite article like this one. So in dieser Zeit blühte das Denken der Romantiker. At this time, the uh, romanticist thinking blossomed. In this time blossomed the thinking of the Romantics. Um, so we have das Denken, the thinking, the thinking of the Romantics. So um, das Denken, the thinking. Das Singen der Kinder war überraschend schön. The singing of the children was surprisingly beautiful. Das Singen der Kinder. So the singing of the children or the children singing sounds quite good as well. Das Rauchen und Trinken sind verboten. So um, this is one of the cases. Sometimes with nouns in English, we leave off that um, that article, especially when they're sort of concepts or ideas or uh, uh, abstract things. Um, so in English, we say smoking and drinking, but then in German, this is uh, the article is there when it might not be there in English. But anyway, it shows you how it's neuter. All of these um, gerunds. Or neuter, and then you just got the capital, and then a normal infinitive ending. And then zum plus whatever it is um, can also be used with this uh, gerund situation. So for the purpose of whatever it is. Zum Lernen for learning. Zum Lernen braucht man Bücher. Zum Verstehen braucht man Intelligenz. 
for learning one needs books, for understanding one needs intelligence. So zum Verstehen, for understanding, in order to understand, you could also say. For learning, in order to learn, zum Lernen. Yeah. So um, you might remember in the very first email I sent you and um, uh, in uh, announcement or at the uh, announcement on um, Canvas, or the beginning of our discussion thread where we introduced ourselves, I said, Willkommen in unserem kleinen Sommerkurs zum Lesen und Übersetzen der deutschen Sprache. So I told you, welcome to our little summer course on reading and translating the German language. So I used this construction, zum Lernen, for learning, and this one is like, um, I said on reading, but it's actually like for for reading, on the topic of reading, or for reading. So I said, ein Kurs zum Lesen und Übersetzen der deutschen Sprache, which is a course on reading and translating the German language, or a course for reading and translating. So you see you have zum plus just the infinitive, which is capitalized, and then we've got the gerund, ing, in English. So it's always fun to come back to sentences you've seen before, and then you see like, wow, look at all the grammar going on that I didn't know how to analyze at the time, but now I understand why all this stuff is happening. So now we have our homework at the end of Kapitel 10. We have the end of chapter homework, and then after you get through all of these, you can move on to Kapitel 11. Viel Spaß beim Übersetzen und wir sehen uns nächstes Mal. Tschüss, auf Wiedersehen, mach's gut.